Hey guys, it's Chris from Versus 3D. Happy New Year. Um, right now, it is the first week of January. I am not exactly sure when this video is going to go live. Um, a couple things. I hope everybody had a great holiday. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy whatever you celebrate. Everyone celebrates something at some point. Anyway, uh, I am celebrating because my wife bought me this really nice new hat for Christmas. So thanks, babe. And she also uh, bought me a digital voice recorder for Christmas. So hopefully the sound on this video is much better than any of my previous videos. So anyway, enough about that, enough about stuff that I think is fun. Um, what I really think is fun is what is in this box. So I, if you've watched any of like my last six or seven months worth of videos, I have kind of stopped doing unboxings. But this one is a really special machine, so I am going to do a full unboxing. I'm going to do this video in several parts. There's going to be an unbox, there's going to be a build, and there's going to be prints and final thoughts. I feel super special because I, as far as I know, I am the only person in North America to have this printer. Um, it doesn't come out for a couple months. And uh, as far as I know, nobody else has it. So I don't know exactly how long it's going to take before I can publish this video. But as soon as I get the go ahead, it's going to get published. Um, I want to say a huge thank you to everybody at Anycubic. This is the new Mega X. Okay, so here we go. I have to admit, I already cut the box open and I opened it up and I took a peek inside, but I swear I did not take anything out. So here we go. It is a big box and I do not have a lot of space. I feel like I need to buy a bigger house just so I can have a studio that I can actually shoot videos in. Then maybe I would make more of them. I don't think that's going to happen, especially if my wife sees this video. So, all right. If you haven't seen um, just a tiny bit of release information on the Mega X, it is quite a large machine comparatively to anything else in the uh, Anycubic Mega line. So this is actually a 300 by 300 by 305 build volume. So I'm going to take out the bait. Uh, let me, I don't know if I can actually, I can't really tilt this up because it's fairly heavy and this is a folding table. So. I'm just gonna take this piece out. This is the base. And it's nicely wrapped. And I'll put this right here. I believe this is the Ultra Base Pro, but I will double check. So also power cable. I have a B cam rolling down there. I'm hoping to uh, get some footage there. The whole box, a bag of goodies and another layer of foam. I'll step on that later. More foam. All right. We have a kilo of PLA that I can sit up there. And here is the other, the upper gantry. I don't think there's anything in this. I think it's just, a, yep, that's just a spacer. And now I'll kind of lift this up just so you can see. This is packaged in there extremely well, so it's nice and safe. shove that box down there just like that so here's the upper gantry one thing I noticed right off the bat as I was taking it out um, 
if you're familiar with the Anycubic printers, the i3 line, the i3 uh, Mega or the Mega X, this does have, it comes with a sock now, so that's really good because that was one thing that I noticed. Um, there are, I don't want to say problems, but sometimes the part cooling fan would blow directly on the block and cool the nozzle off. So that's nice that that's something that they addressed. I can safely lay this down. All right. So let's see what is in the goodie bag. I'm actually going to shift these over here because my B camera is over there and I want to be able to show what's in the goodie bag. So their paint, their paint removal tool, their print removal tool, which I actually really like these. I have a bunch of them now. This is part and the other part of the spool holder. They've got a filament out sensor. And that's on an angle. I wonder how that actually fits in. The good old bag of tools as usual. A complete spare hot end. In standard any cubic style, a nice full color instruction manual. These are the screws to, for the filament holder, an SD card, a QC tag, these are going to be the assembly uh, bolts for the sides, nozzle cleaner, hmm. This is the first time I've gotten an Anycubic printer that doesn't actually have an extra pack of five nozzles. So I don't know if that was an oversight or if they're not coming with them. They're in different sizes anyway, so typically I didn't use them, but some people might. And then here you have a USB cable and... Is that actually a flash drive? So as always, you get your Anycubic after sales and service card, the USB cable, and I'm just going to investigate to see if this is a reader or an actual flash drive. Oh, it's a reader. Okay. This is a new style. I like this one better. They used to give, um, I probably have 40 of them kicking around here. Here's one. This is the one they used to give compared to the new one. All right, so here we have all of our stuff. I just wanted to do a quick fly through of all the parts just so you can see everything one more time a little closer up. This was a really fast video and uh, I'm really excited to build it. So I think I'm gonna start shooting part two now. Okay, so by now you're probably thinking, why isn't he gone yet? Well, I kind of decided that, well, I, I would not do just an unboxing video because it would be like three and a half minutes long. So I'm going to do the build. So we'll do two videos. We'll do the unboxing and build, and then we'll do a second video later on for setup, first prints, all that good stuff. 
So you with me? All right, let's go. I got, I took some things off the table already and I got a couple of things that I'm gonna need. First, I'm going to cut this plastic without cutting any wires, if there's any here. Nope, there aren't any, I'm safe. All right. Get rid of that. Hey, all right. And this paper can be used for leveling. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check the power supply, which is on this side here, to see where we're at. We are at 220, so I'm just gonna flick that over. So now it will actually work in Canada. All right, excellent. So this is actually a build that is extremely similar to uh, the Mega S and the i3 Mega. So it's really just you put this where it goes here and screw it together, add a couple of things and we're done. So this is gonna be fairly quick. I'm just gonna go over some stuff. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna check the wheels on both sides of the bed because they can get loose in shipping. Um, not this side because this side has these centric nuts. They're kind of deep in there and that one is definitely loose. That one is okay. And that one is okay. So the middle one is fairly loose and needs to be tightened. So I don't know if I can just kind of squeak in here and do it if these are long enough. Oh, it definitely looks long enough. And it's nice that they give you all of these tools and they're actually decent quality tools. So let me see if this is the right one. Nope. Let's go with the bigger one. That's the right one. Okay, so I don't know if I can actually show you this, but inside here, this middle, where is it? Yep. This middle eccentric nut, I just need to make an adjustment on that. All right, we are good. So now the bed is moving nicely and it feels nice and even. All right, so there's that. Now, this next step is the only really tricky part that I've come across in building any of these machines. Now, one thing to notice, the motor cable is kind of tucked up under here. Sometimes you actually miss it. So I like to pull it out. And then another thing I'm gonna point out while I have this apart right here, I'm gonna slide this over for a second so we can get a little bit closer. This machine has dual ZN stops. It's not something you normally see in a machine in this price point. And I haven't even told you what the price point is. And I'm gonna wait until the very, very end of this video before I tell you. So if it's all I care about, fast forward to the end. Anyway, so dual ZN stops, again, not something you normally see even in, not even in this price point, but in something that is 300 by 300 by 305. So now I am gonna swap these back again so I can get more in the shot on the other camera. And all we really do here 
is set this like this. Get your hand under here and lift up the back of the machine. Just like this. Don't drop it on the cables and then just lower it down. Then as you move it forward, there's holes on each side. There's two in the front on each side and two in the back on each side. So there's four bolts. And then there's this bag of bolts right here. These look to be M5, I'm gonna say eights. Here's my dog, can you hear him breathing? You can see his head. Aries, hi, go away. I love you, but you gotta go. Puppy, bye. I love you, bye. Go, go see mama. It's my baby. All right, so they do give you a full tool kit, but I prefer to use my own because I like driver styles. And I've always found just getting these threaded is a little tricky on even the smaller ones. I'm gonna, because this, this doesn't sit flat, so you can't sit it flat. So let me find it. fast forward through all this so I don't make an absolute idiot out of myself while I'm trying to get the screws in the hole here okay we're all adjusted now um, just want to show you a couple of things really quick about the machine so as I said before it's 300 by 300 by 305 uh, it has a nice touch screen on the front dual uh, Extru it's 2020 uh, it's not quite 2020 extrusion but dual extrusion with v-slot wheels on the sides and then we've got uh on this side over here we might as well do this while i'm showing you so in the front part of the machine you've got your usb slot and your sd card slot on the back of the machine we're going to plug in a couple of cables so this Bottom one here, the black one, is for the filament out sensor, which we will install in a minute. The green one is the hot end. And then the red one here is the steppers, the Z. All right, and those all just pop in like that. I'm gonna leave this extra one hanging out right now because the filament sensor is gonna get installed right here. Okay. And then on this side, we just have the 220 to 110 switch on the power supply, also the plug and the power switch. Serial numbers on the back. Don't forget, that's important. All right, so next one is, let's see where we're at here. Filament sensor. And now it was very specific in the book that it only goes one way. So I am going to just confirm which way that one way is. Okay, so you can see, or if you can see, this is not straight. Here we go. It's actually at an angle facing one way. So the angle has to face in toward this side. So it's gonna go this way. And it's gonna screw in just like this right here. So I'm gonna spin it. And hopefully we'll be able to do it standing at this angle. 
That is not the right size. That's a two and a half. So I'm just gonna unscrew these two screws right here. Oh, here comes another cat. This is Ned, you guys haven't seen him yet. See if he comes up to visit. Mm, seems like he is disinterested. Okay, so it's gonna face. Oop. This way, like this. Okay, so you see how that angle goes that way, so it's facing in toward the extruder. And I don't think I had mentioned this. In fact, I know I haven't mentioned this, but this is one of Anycubic's Titan style extruders, and I've actually found that these work really, really well. Like I, said, I have a fleet of the i3 Mega S's, and uh, it, they work great. All right. We're almost done, by the way. So now, filament holder. This works pretty much exactly the same as it does on the Mega S. So you just need two of these. Another thing too is Anycubic is great at giving spare things. So I always find that they give extra screws. So there's two extra screws for the upper gantry assembly just in case, and then there's also an extra filament holder screw. So all you really do with this is you, you want to take this so it, the, the flat, well, the, it's on the opposite of the completely flat side and take these two pieces and match them up, two holes, and then drop a screw. and drop the screw again. I'm not having a good day for dropping things. And then set one. Grab the other one. So it basically just gets built like this. And there's your spool holder. And now to attach it, all you do is loosen up these screws here on the end. So top and bottom on the end. And see how this has the two grooves? You wanna just slide that right into place. and tighten it back down. And then the last thing we have to do is plug in the filament sensor. So and I didn't look to see which way it's faced. So the two little prompt connectors, I don't even know what you call these things. Face out. And then you actually want to loosen this up just a little bit because you don't want this to be super tight. You want this to actually be able to rotate like that so it's a little more free. And that is it for the build. So Let's uh, pause for a minute and I will plug it in. Okay, now all we have to do is turn it on. So I have my other camera zoomed right into the screen. I'm gonna probably flip so you can see the screen because you don't really need to see me. All 
Oh, and it sings just like the other one. All right, so it's got a nice color screen on it. Um, so I'm just gonna go to the menus really quick. So the print button is very simply the print button. Uh, there's no SD card in it right now, so it's just not seeing it, but normally you would have uh, whatever files you have on your SD card here. Back is always the top left corner. So now tools, we can move the axes. Let's see if they actually move. Probably wants me to home it first. Well, let's try it. Well, we know those two switches work. Doesn't seem like anything is in the way of anything. All right. Now, yeah, now I can move it. Okay. So this is basically, you can move increments up or down and this depends on how much. So if I wanna move it up 10, I hit this. Up one, down one. It's pretty easy. So I'm not gonna really go through all that. So now I can go back and then um, if I go to home, I can home any of the three or all at the same time. Preheat, I can set to preheat PLA. So the standard settings are 190 and 50 or if I wanna switch to ABS, it's 240 and 80. But I don't want any of those right now. So now I'm gonna click um, over here and it's going to move to the next one so I'm just going to hit cool down and then reset will reset anything that I may have changed so I'm going to cancel that and then filament now this is not going to work at the moment I'll show more of this in part two but this is basically a filament load and unload so once it goes up to temp which I believe their default is 170 uh, you can actually insert or remove filament and it will just move that motor and then there's one more page over here. There's a help. I can't actually read that because I'm old. And the about, so this has all the firmware information, size, nozzle size, everything that's in there. And we'll go back. So then the setup, the middle one here, this, you can change your language between English and Chinese uh, just by tapping it apparently, there you go. <laughs> Uh, you can automate. You can set a specific temperature. So if I want to heat this to 205, I can just move the plus sign up and down, and then I'm going to move that back down to zero, just in case I don't want it to heat up right now. And same thing with the bed. And then this is just to disable the motors. So now the the motors are free to move. And then there's another page here. This is basically just speed, so the current speed is zero, but it would tell you, uh, and then you can actually add, or you can speed it up or slow it down. And then here's the best part. You can mute it. I love the sounds, but it gets old really fast. So, and that's the entire menu. So it's really, really easy to use. So, that is basically the whole printer. It was a super easy build. And you saw it took me all of, I don't know, 10 minutes to put it together. And five of that was fumbling around with the screws that I always fumble around with because I'm terrible at that part. And uh, that's about it. All right, so I'm gonna wrap this up now. 
and uh, I just want to go over the specs again real quick. So the build volume on this is 300 by 300 by 305. Um, one thing that makes this kind of printer stand out is this rigid metal frame. This thing is solid um, and you can actually, pick, I'm not going to, but you can pick it up right from this top section right here and it's not a problem. Um, I mentioned before it has the dual Z end stops. So if you're, if you end up getting, you know, crooked somehow, whenever it homes, it's automatically going to level right back to where it should be. That's something you don't normally see in a printer of this size. Uh, the Titan style extruder, um, I did double check and it is, it is a Titan style. It's, I opened it up. It's, uh, it's not uh, dual geared like a Bontac. It's straight, it's straight up like a, a Titan. Um, the dual rails on the Y and this bed is super stable. It's not going anywhere once I adjusted that eccentric nut. Um, I did double check. I said earlier that I wasn't sure if this is the Ultra Base or the Ultra Base Pro. It is not the Pro, so it's standard Ultra Base. Still, it's amazing. I use it on a ton of my printers. Um, it does also have resume from power loss. Uh, and just so we know the temps, the extruder can go to 250C and the bed can go to 90C. It does have the cool color, uh, color touchscreen uh, with the sounds that you can mute or not mute if you like them. And uh, oh yeah, how much is it? I almost fell over when I found out. This printer is 399 US. So that's a huge deal. You're not gonna find anything in this size uh, with this type of build quality, even remotely close to that price. So score, look for it. Hopefully it's available uh, in uh, mid to late February, maybe early March. Um, so that's all I got. I am going to do a second video now, not today, but I'm gonna start shooting a second video, uh, which is gonna be uh, calibration, first prints, first impressions, things like that. Um, I may actually do something I don't normally do. Don't quote me on this, but I may actually print a helmet on this just to show the build size. So um, I'm going to wrap it up. I'm done. I'm finished talking. So anyway, this is Chris from Versus 3D. And I just want to thank everybody for taking the probably half an hour to watch this video. If you like the video, uh, please subscribe uh, in the, the link down at the bottom there. It's on the corner of the screen over here, I think. And then uh, click the bell, which is going to be somewhere so you can get notified when part two comes out and all that good stuff. I do, um, I don't, uh, get paid for these videos. So if you would like to buy me a coffee, there's a link in the bottom. You can buy me a coffee and all that fun stuff. So I am out and I hope to see you guys soon. Take it easy.